Hi, I'm Lula. Welcome to Lula's Way. I'm glad you're here. So, uh, I'm freezing my arse off up here in Massachusetts. Me no likey. Me no likey. So, um, you know, this is where my home is. This is where my family is. This is where I love to be. Um, and uh, it's also where I like to take off from in the winter. So um, I just enjoyed beautiful, gorgeous weather for the past two months in Arizona. Um, I'll be home for this month uh, to enjoy the holidays with the people I love. And then I will be off to Florida for the rest of the winter um, to enjoy some nice weather. Um, and, I, and to enjoy my van. You know, I love being up in my big bedroom and I have all the luxuries. I have running water. It's hot and I have soap and you, I got soapy hands and I got a cozy, cozy bed. And it's warm. I have a toilet that flushes. I have all the conveniences that you would think that I would be just ecstatic to, uh, to be enjoying right now. Um, but you know, to be honest, that lasts about a couple of days. Then you start to not always notice all the time. And then I start yearning for the van again. And it just seems to be the cycle of Lulu's world. Um, so I have a list. I've been keeping a list as I've, as I traveled the past two months, I've been keeping a list of all the things that I wanted to tweak when I got home. And it's just so interesting. Like how many times do I need to use this build before, um, I get it right. You know, it's always right for the time. Uh, when I experience new things, needs change. So I experienced a lot of new things uh, on this last trip. Um, I never took this van on back roads that were very, very sketchy. So I didn't, I never had to really think about some certain things. Um, I also have always been uh, places where um, I've had bathrooms. Um, even if I'm like on the road, there's always public bathrooms. I used my, my little bucket toilet, very, very little, uh, on this trip. It's for a lot of it, it's all I used. So need some tweaks to that. Um, you know, you don't give it all that much attention when you hardly ever use it, but when you use it all the time, not only do you want it to be functioning better, you also discover what functioning better would actually look like because you can only imagine using it all the time. Uh, and then when you actually use it all the time, you see what needs to change. Um, just running into some, just certain um, situations that of little things that I want to solve. So I'm going to tell you about those and I'm going to work on those over the next month while I'm home. Um, right now I have this little space heater <laughs> running just to kind of take the chill out because this garage is freezing. It's freezing. And um, so this is helping a little bit, even with the doors open, it's just taking the edge off. So I hope you, I hope it's not interfering with the audio. So first and foremost is my electrical, my solar. So um, I have an appointment to be with Bill from Pilgrim Van Builds in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Um, he's my go-to guy for electrical and solar and electrical systems. Um, so he is going to install a DC to DC charger. Now I don't know a lot about those. I don't know a lot about electricity and I kind of don't want to learn, you know, I'm a learner. I love to learn stuff, but I don't want to learn electricity. I don't know. It hurts my brain. I don't want to figure it out. <laughs> so even if I Google, what is a DC to DC charger? It explains to me what a DC to DC charger is, but I don't quite understand the explanation. So I'm not going to try to explain it here. If you, if you are curious about it, um, how this is going to solve my problems, um, then <clears throat> perhaps if you Google it, you'll understand. Maybe you can explain it to me, but if you're going to explain it to me in the comments, could you explain it to me? Like I'm five years old, explain it to me like I'm five years old. Seriously, like literally, because uh, I won't understand it otherwise. But once this DC to DC charger is hooked up from my battery to my Bluetti, it, it's going to take the place of 
the wire that's currently there from the switch to the battery um, that I can switch on to charge while I drive. Let me just say, when I switch that on to charge while I drive, I take in approximately 110 watts. With this DC to DC charger, I will be taking in between 7 and 800 watts. Now, when I plug into shore power, I take in about 450 watts. So you can see this DC to DC charger is going to be the maximum way that I can take in. So when I drive for like three hours with the freezer running, um, I might end up with another 10% in storage because it's actually coming in and 35 of it is 35 watts are being used as 110 are coming in. I'm not going to store a lot. But with that same three hour drive with this DC to DC charger, I should be at 100%. Absolutely, positively at 100%. So if I find myself in a situation where I'm parked and I'm stationary for a few days, um, if I can start, if I can start that three days at a hundred percent, um, I'll likely between the sun and just keeping an eye on it, I should be just fine for a few days. If I have a cloudy day, I can just run my car. If I ran my car for half an hour, I would, I would gather so much. I could use my pressure cooker, you know, if I'm not gathering. So I'm thinking that this is going to be the solution for me. Um, I would rather do that than try to figure out more solar, portable solar, solar on different parts of my van. Um, I, I would, I'm going to, this is, this is going to be step one. I'm really excited about that. That's on December 12th. Um, he's also going to put in a shore power plug. So right now when I want to plug this into, like just say I'm at somebody's house and I want to plug it in. I need to put the extension cord in, uh, in the power block. I need to run it out my window and I'll just put my window up and leave it open a crack and then, uh, plug it into the house. But now I'll have a plug somewhere on the outside of my van. I'm not sure where, but it will be on the outside. It won't be on the door, but it will be on the outside of my van. And, and then what I would do, just, just say it won't come in here, but just say it came in right here. Just say this is where the shore power plug was. I would plug the power block into that and I could have all my doors closed. And then on the other side of the car would be the plug where the extension cord went. So then I could have all my windows up. So, you know, when there's bugs, you want your windows up, you know. Um, I mean, having it open a little crack is not a problem, uh, especially with the rain guards that I have on my windows because you really can't even see that it's down. But if it's cold, 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 or there's bugs, 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 I want to shut the windows. And then I have my screen right here. This is how I can have a screened open window. Um, so I'm looking forward to having that. And also uh, what I asked him if he could do um, is I decided that although I really enjoy these lights, these lights are good, okay? They're USB charged. So I just charge them with the, just plug them in over here. I got a full charge. And, and I have three of them in here, and they give me all the light I need. I decided that since I have this fuse block right here where you can hardwire things in, so right now the two things that are hardwired to this are the freezer and the max air fan. Those two things, I don't have to keep plugging and unplugging, plugging and unplugging. They're hardwired right to this fuse block. So I decided that I want lights that are hardwired because there's space on that fuse block. There's space for other things. So I'm going to have puck lights put up. So I told him I want uh, four puck lights. So I'm going to do one here, one here, one here, and one here. We're going to hide the wires. I'm not worried about that because they can just be tucked in behind these panels. And then I want to switch. And I want a switch that I can reach from uh, the bed or in here. So I'm kind of, my spot that I have picked out, if it's not going to be a problem, would be right here on the bed. On the bed, this is, this is a, like a wide, this is like a, a wide board right here. I would like the switch to be right here. I'm kind of thinking. Uh, I want it to be a dimmer switch. And uh, I just want um, 
I don't want to hit three buttons. I don't want to, uh, they start getting a little dim when they're ready to be charged. Um, and then I need to get the, get all the USB wires out and start plugging them in. Uh, I decided that I don't want to do that anymore. I want one switch, a dimmer switch and for all of them. And <clears throat> as long as it's a dimmer, it's not like I'm going to have like four bright lights all the time. I can always dim them, but I do want to reach it from the bed. So that was my idea. So, but if he's, if he has any other idea of a location for it, or if you do, uh, I'm open to hearing it. So I have some work that I want to do about this whole area right here. So I love this cabinet. So I just, I've been using, if you remember, I had that problem with the magnet not holding this up anymore. Um, so I had just put this little bungee, hooked the bungee right onto this little shelf and I've been using it like this. Okay. Which is fine, but I want to, I, I, it just needs a, it needs a stronger magnet because it was dropping open. It was dropping open. And, um, so I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on, some people told me this just needs to be brought out a little bit. So maybe just to, um, you know, this magnet right here that I just might need to just unscrew those two things, bring it forward a little bit. And that might be all I need, but, um, we'll see about that. That's going to get solved before I leave. Also, um, I was thinking about replacing this storage basket right here with something a little bit bigger because, you know, every square inch matters, every square inch matters. So when I see this basket up here, what I see is this couple of inches of wasted space and this inch of wasted space. So basically I could have a container that was this big instead of this big. I could, I could, um, have it come out even, I could have it right now. It overhangs like, like a half an inch. It could overhang two inches as long as it didn't come out any further than this. Like this is where, you know, so it could be wider. It could even go a little bit over that way. This has been very handy because I can access it from the door. I can access it from here. I can access it from bed. So a lot of things end up in here. Um, it's a nice little catch all. So I want to, I'm going to take this down and I'm going to um, either custom make something or, um, or uh, find something that's a, just a bigger size. It can overhang just the same way that this overhangs. You know, this, my little food shelf here overhangs. This could overhang too. So I'm going to make better use of that space. Another space I want to utilize better and I want to fix up a little bit is the back of this. I notice sometimes when I occasionally make videos, from uh, as I'm driving and I see this in the back, it just looks like unfinished business. And I thought I could make this whole, the whole back of this cabinet just, I'm gonna fix it up. I don't know whether I'm gonna paint it or I'm gonna cover it with a contact paper, but I just wanna make it a little better, a little prettier. Um, also, I'm thinking, uh, there's no reason why I couldn't use this area here and this area here for some additional storage. There's no reason why I couldn't hang a little cup right here, some kind of a container that could hold some things and over here too, because it's not going to infringe on my head. Um, it's not going to come out to here. It's going to maybe come out to here and I could also access it from the bed. So I just thought like, I'm going to just take advantage of just this chunk of space, this chunk of space, because every square inch <laughs> is, when you have a spot for things, um, it's just really, really important to have um, as much storage as possible. I also considered this space right here. This is where the seatbelt was. And uh, I could take this out if I wanted to, but between here and here, I'm just thinking of some kind of a little sh shallow storage. What I would like, there's two things that, um, I would like behind, beside the bed at all time, and I don't, and I don't have it behind, beside the bed at all times. And that is my um, toothpicks and some tissues. So I thought about making something right here, something I could even use this to attach it to somehow, um, where I can put maybe just I could even double-sided tape tape a little storage thing here to hold tissues and. Um, and my toothpicks. 
I don't want it to come out too far because I don't want it to be in my way when I'm sleeping. But even it was even if it was just a, a couple of inches deep and somehow opened, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out, but I'm going to take advantage of that space too. So if any of you have seen the other videos when I was um, really admiring Darlene's mat that she had for her uh, for outside her van, it was called Mad Mats is the brand. Um, it was just like the best quality and the best design and the, a really good size and it felt good on your feet. Your, your chair on it didn't like make a mark in it and it seemed to just do well with the rocks in the desert. The one that I had was just like a cheapy doodle straw thing and it got destroyed. I threw it out. And um, so I, at the dollar store, I got that little cloth rug and it's, it's cute and I did use it once, but it's not practical. First of all, it's too small. Second of all, it's not washable. It's going to be a problem. So I was just like, how am I going to store? How am I going to store one of those mad mats? I want the mad mat. So one of my, one of my commenters here on my channel, I don't remember who you are. If you want to remind me, I would love to thank you for the idea, suggested a spot that I could keep it. That was the whole problem. The whole problem with me getting a mad mat was where am I going to put? It's four by six. And so when it rolls up, it's four feet long. Where am I going to put a roll this big that's four feet long? Like, where am I going to put that in here? You know, um, somebody had a fantastic idea. And when I first read it, I thought, no. And then I thought, yeah, that would work. And here it is right here. So it's all rolled up. And if it sits right here, right against the door, it doesn't interfere with these cabinet doors because the cabinet doors are high. It lets me bring my cooler all the way here, which is where I need it to be when I, when I cook. I never, never sit like this. I never sit like that. Never. I either sit, I either sit right like this or I sit like this, basically. So, it's really right in, in the uh, right on the floor, and it's just not in my way. It's so cool. Now I had to pick. Oh, was it hard to pick a design? First of all, I thought hers was the best. I just absolutely loved um, her pattern. Um, I wanted that pattern, but you know something? It's just not the vibe of my van. It was definitely the vibe of her van. Um, and I, I just said, I'm going to find one that feels more like the vibe of my van. So I got Houndstooth. Do you know what Houndstooth is? It's the, it's the, it's what I picked for my hot logic. This is called Houndstooth. So it's a Houndstooth pattern without me opening the whole thing. You can see how it's the Houndstooth. Same exact as this. And I feel like when I have this outside, of the door of my van, it's going to be kind of an extension of my floor in a way, my black and white check floor, you know? So it's just be like an extension of that. So I thought it would be nice and it will look nice with my red chair on it too. Um, I just thought of everything about it that would, would be important to me. And, um, there's just, you know, I didn't have a mat for a long time because I was like, Oh, you know, what's the big deal? But you know, it really saves um, bringing in a lot of dirt and sand and in, in, in the van because you just stand on it and you can just take your shoes off and hop in, you know? Um, so I thought for Florida, spending a lot of time on the beach, um, this mat, a mat was important and I just wanted, I could have found another brand that maybe had a three foot one instead of four foot or something, but you know something, this is, the, this is the smallest they make. And I just really love the quality of it. I've seen some of these kind of plastic mats that are less quality than this. Um, also, what I really liked about this is, from what Darlene told me, is that this company makes these out of recycled bottles. So it's all made out of recycled bottles. It's just plastic. It's a plastic mat. So you can hose it down. And so I'm very, very excited about that. So I had a problem with my, with my lattice here which is my 
this, the, the platform of my bed is made with vinyl lattice, okay? So for this trip, what happened was it started to get saggy. It started to sag right over the fridge, just here, not over there. This is where a lot of my weight goes, okay? So if I'm sitting up in bed like this, if I'm getting in bed right, right away, all my weight is on this side of the bed. If I'm sitting up like this in bed, which is which is the when I use it like a sofa and I have my dinner up here, a bulk of my weight is right here. When I get up in the middle of the night to pee, I usually go like this and then I go up on my knees like this. All my weight is right here as I'm getting out, right? So <clears throat> although it withstands my weight pretty well, um, after a while, it just started to sag. So now I was noticing a real, a real sag. It was probably sagging like an inch. Um, and I was like, oh, it's gonna, if it starts to, if it starts to scrape against my, my refrigerator, that's not going to be good. So I have a Band-Aid fix, which is kind of a really good fix. I don't know if it's going to be my permanent fix, but um, Luann in her magic um, van full of stuff, she had a piece of wood. She had no idea why she was bringing this piece of wood with her, but she had this wood. And what I did was to bring it up, this wood is just sitting on top of the bed. And then I put zip ties to bring the lattice back up. This was really sinking, sinking down like about a couple of inches, an inch or two. So I just, so right now it's as long as the bed, it's sitting on the frame. And I just brought, I was going to, as a fix, I was going to put some, put some, um, some wood against the frame here underneath and bring it up. But I was just like, you know, I just brought it up like this. So I brought up the sag. You see, you can see right here. I don't know if you can see that, that little bit of the sag, but right here is where it was really getting low. So that was my, that was my temporary fix. And I'll just see my friend Bob is going to be coming over to, help me um, think through some of these things that I'm going through today. Um, I'm always open to better ideas. If you have a better idea, let me know. But I was going to, I'm, I'm thinking just putting, uh, I could even do a couple of more. I could do one right here, bring this up even more, you know, um, down here. Yeah, I think the, I think the whole thing needs some stability. It started to crack a little bit and I had to put some, I had to put some screws in. Thank goodness I have all my tools on the road with me because I just used my drill, drilled, drilled a pilot hole, put some screws in to, to help that because it was really, my weight was really, um, knocking it down. So it needed, it, starting out with the whole thing just being lattice without any support under it was, um, incorrect but you know when you know so it just needs needs some more it needs some support going down another thing i need to upgrade is these little s hooks right here so uh they work as far as like i can put my jacket on but they're just too small and the fact that they move is kind of has been annoying me like i'll go to hang something like this but like i have to hold it hold it like this so that it doesn't swing back and then i have to get the item on it just right and then i'm, I'm good yeah i don't need to be dealing with that so i need a solution for um hooks hooks on here i don't need more than three and i want uh i don't want them to be this and <clears throat> i want them to be bigger so uh, anybody have any ideas for that um, I was thinking if I could find like hooks that had like a little backboard with three hooks on it and I could put the backboard, like even drill some holes and just kind of zip tie it onto here. Um, just so that it's stable, but I don't know, something will come to me. Either Bob will have a good idea or one of you will have a good idea.
I ordered three more of these magnets because I love these magnets. They're so awesome. I get them from Amazon. I think I, I think the link is in the description. But you know, they're very, very strong magnets. And um, you know, these are, are hooks that so you can put them on the ceiling and use it like that. Or you can do it on the wall like that. You could you can just do anything. So see, I can put it up here like this, and I can hang something like that. Or or I can put it on the wall like this and do it like that. So it, it holds a lot of things and they're very, very strong. And um, I don't even know exactly what I need them for right now, but I got them because they're amazing. Uh, my blue cabinets. First of all, they need to be touched up. The paint needs to be touched up. They took a beating. They took a beating this trip. I'm just going to touch them all up with paint. Uh, another thing is when I open this top one and go like that to access my things, the only reason that this stops like that is because of this knob. Open and then I open this, it goes like that. Um, I want it to stop like this. I want to be able to have both open and access things and I want this to not like that. So what I'm thinking is a little L bracket. If the L bracket went up here and in here and just and that just sat that like this. Like that. If there was a couple like that, if there was over here maybe two. Or even just a little piece of wood or something. Just so that it would sit on that. Like that. Any ideas? Let me know. Let me know. You guys have some good ideas. Another thing was, if you remember my video when I went to the 99 cent store with Luann, <laughs> I got these little bins. Now, great idea, because I have like my incense up here. I have my um, my nail clippers, and I have a little couple little clothespins for like when I have my um, my towel from. Um, Planner Fitness. I, 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 when I'm gonna let it, when I need it to dry while I'm driving, I just clip one here and I clip one over here and I just so it kind of hangs here while it dries. Very, very quick drying towel. So somebody gave me some, somebody on the road gave me some clothespins. The problem with these is I can't see what's in there. So I'm gonna look for my nail clippers i have to like fish around i got a bunch of stuff up there and i gotta i have to fish around until i feel what feels like because i can't see so i like the idea though and i like how i can overhang it see it comes out like about two inches because um i can take advantage of that space so i ordered uh i found on amazon just the right size clear so they're clear instead so right now these are these, I have these with the double-sided alien tape. Look at, I can't even pull it off. Ah, oh, did it. <laughs> that, that's how strong the alien tape is, you know? So, yeah, so this stuff is going nowhere. So I got, I got like one, two, three for here and a couple for here that are going to go kind of sideways because this isn't as deep. This isn't as tall right here. This is this has got more space here, less space there. So I really like the idea of utilizing some storage up here. But like I said, I can't see. I'm, I'm whatever I'm getting. I have to fish for. I have to just like feel for it. it makes no sense. So I'm going to switch those out to clear. Another couple of um, issues that I had on this road trip that I want solved is when I cook and I'm going to cool my food. Like I want everything to be cooled off before I put it in my cooler putting warm food in here, melting my ice. Um, so I, I have my container filled with cooked rice or cooked sweet potatoes or cooked chicken. And I put it down and I have to put a cover on it because flies get in. I don't want to close my van up. I like to have my windows down, both of these doors open, the whole back doors open. I just like it all open. Um, so what I decided, I said, I need to be able to cool my food off without putting the cover on. So I have some leftover screen from that roll of screen that I bought to make the screens for my windows. 
um, I'm just going to cut a circle out, the same, a little bit bigger than the, uh, the Tupperware container. I'm going to finish the edges in some way, and I'm just going to sit it right on top. Sit it right on top. I'm probably going to make two of them in case I have two things cooling, and then I will have my food screened in with something that takes up very, very little space. I know they have those little dome things that you can put over food when you're at picnics and stuff. I don't have space for that, but I have space for a flat piece of screen. So I'm going to make two of those. That's on my list. Um, another thing was my leveling blocks. So I bought this little set of four leveling blocks, um, and I bought those a while ago, and I've never used them. This trip, oh boy, did I use them. I had to use them a lot. Uh, and sometimes four wasn't enough. Um, if I want to bring um, my front up, um, I'd say I put two on that tire, two on that tire. I bring the front up, but just say I want, I need that, that side to go a little bit higher. I want to put a there. I, I just, I only had four, so I could only work with what I had. Um, but having the, the van level while you're cooking in here, while you're sleeping in here, it's very, very important. So I got myself an extra set. So now they're just going to go under the floor, tucked away. I just realized their value now. They're very, very valuable to have leveling blocks. And I think the leveling blocks that I have, I think the link is in the description. If you want to check that out. Another thing I'd like to make for the back is a, um, a mosquito net. Because I'm going to Florida. There's mosquitoes in Florida. I didn't, have, didn't see one mosquito in, uh, in Arizona. Lots of flies, though. There were flies. Flies can be a nuisance, but at least they're not biting you. Um, so I have some mosquito netting that I was going to like custom make something for the back door. And I just want like uh, it's a magnet on. I'd like a slit down the middle. I know I would need to like overlap. So there'd be like an overlap in the slit that you would open. And I just want like the bottom to just kind of puddle uh, at the, on, the, on the bumper. Um, but I decided that the next time I go to the thrift store, I'm going to look for some lace um, curtain panels that have a very small knit and use those instead of um, just to have something really pretty. I've, I saw somebody on YouTube that made, made it out of um, lace, and um, I just thought it just looked really nice. So I'm going to have just picture in just like lace panels. I'll gather them a little bit, put some magnets in have them be magnetized all the way around this way and at the bottom just have it kind of puddle and then have a slit that opens. Another thing here is when this door, when these doors are open and I want to close them from inside, I can, I can, this one closes first. I can reach the edge of this and slam it shut. This one, I, I have nothing to pull on it to slam it shut. Nothing. So if I get if I grab anything and try, it's it's just it, I can't get it to go tight. So I want something here, something here, maybe installed on this plastic, some kind of a little handle. I was kind of thinking, you know those um, what are those called? Those toggle bolts. Um, they're called um. Molly bolts, yeah, where you, you, you go through it with the bolt and then it has this little thing that opens like that and holds it on the back. I thought about maybe something like that on this plastic that I can just something that I can hold like this and just pull so I can pull it tight. I would like a little solution for that. Maybe Bob will help me with that so I don't ruin the plastic. So now I'm going to talk about my toilet situation and how I want to change that. So that's trash. Um, so basically what I was using, so basically what I'm using are these little trash bags like this. Go like this, and I've been putting down a little bit of kitty litter, and 
I stole an idea from Luann, which was a really good idea. Um, and that is, I bought myself a package of puppy pads, puppy training pads. Okay. They look like that. That's actually um, not a whole one. Let's see, because I've been cutting them because I don't need a whole one. A whole one looks like this. I got them at the dollar store. Cheap, cheap, cheap. There you go. This is a whole one. I cut it in thirds. I cut it in thirds. So I just keep a I keep a little supply of these at the bottom of this at the bottom of this bucket. Okay. I go like this. And then I take this, the, the, a third of it, and I just line the whole thing inside like that. And that just handles any, any moisture. And it just works perfectly, just like that. Okay? So it's because I ran out of the kitty litter. Because, I mean, I didn't take like a kitty litter like I have a cat. Well, I do have a cat, but I'm not on the road. I just took a little Ziploc bag. And I, like I said, I hardly ever use this. So I really didn't think like, wow, take Take a lot of kitty litter. And then you go to try to buy kitty litter and you got to buy these big bags. And I just, I didn't. So that's when she said, try the puppy pads. And it's just, all you want is something that's just going to absorb a little bit of moisture because you get rid of it right away. So what I've been doing is, I told you I have these two, only, only so I can store it right in this bin. These needed to be as tall as the bin, no, no bigger. So those go like that. And then I just... Have a seat, take care of business, and it works just fine. But I'm noticing now, uh, because I've been using it more often, is that sometimes these can get a little saggy like that when you sit on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sturdier surface on the bottom of it so that it, when it sits on here, it doesn't bend in, into, the, into the bucket. But I don't want a round seat. I don't want anything bulky that I have to... I just, I just store this right behind, just like that, right in the, in the, in the, in the, um, storage bin. They go right behind like that. Easy, easy, breezy. So the only thing is I just want to make these more sturdy. Other than that, it worked out really good. So just a few minor adjustments. I also found this in my, in with just some of my stuff, and I thought, I just love this. It's so pretty. So I'm kind of thinking of just hot glue on that right up there. What do you think? It's got a green tinge to it, which is the color of the bed. And then I also thought of this spot. I thought right there would be nice too. It's just so beautiful. So I am going to put that in one of those two spots. What do you think? What do you think? Which spot's better? I think I'm going to like that. So last but not least is this little bungee cord that I have around the Berkey has been keeping the Berkey secure for a, a lot of miles. But on that road in, at Lake Mead, it did not survive. And it fell over. It, it didn't break, thank you, God. Uh, this could have broken because it's just plastic. But it didn't break but it fell over, the water was everywhere. Um, so I want this to be more secure. So I am going to come up with something. I don't know whether I'm gonna do, just add some bungees, like maybe another one around here, maybe two around here. So it would have um, four bungees instead of one, or whether I should build something around it, build something, 
um, I don't know. I'm, Bob is really good at that stuff because he uh, he has been very helpful with his advice on um, things being secure and things being able to withstand the roads. Because what I experienced on that road and other roads that my whole bill didn't fall apart is a miracle. And it's be really because of him. Because um, what I was hearing, when I was driving, what I was hearing back here, it sounded like everything was getting ripped apart. I thought for sure I was going to, these cabinets were going to be on the ground. This thing was going to be away from the wall. Nothing, nothing. He's a, he's a genius. So I'm going to ask him um, what he thinks. If he just thinks like just maybe uh, three more bungees around here, maybe even thicker bungees. This is a very thin one. Maybe, maybe some of those rubber ones would do it. Uh, but those are going to have to be, when they go in this this wood, because this is not, this is just um, composition wood. See this right here, this eye hook is in a two by four. But the other eye hooks are not going to be able to, they're going to have to be on bolts. There's going to have to be bolts that come through here, out here, and then um, tie in with things. Also, another thing that happened when I was on, uh, on that road, not only did the Berkey fall over, but this came detached from the wall, and that's because I screwed it in and I didn't use those bolts the way that he always suggests. And this whole thing sh came shifted out about two inches just on this side. This side didn't move because it's bolted onto the bed, but this is not bolted onto anything. This needs to be bolted to the floor. This needs an L bracket on the floor. And again, it needs to be with the bolts. And I kind of cheated when I with that because um it should have been done before the trip um so lots of bolts um bolt with um and get this get this really secured to this get this secured to the floor and get the berkey secured to this so that's all going to happen um you know i don't know when i'm going to be on a road like that again but i'm going to be ready for it <laughs> i don't think that's going to happen in florida but I don't know that, but um, I never knew what a road like that can do to your stuff. But I'm very grateful that nothing got ruined and my build was in place. I mean, I just, I just had to push this back. My oils went over too. My oils have never moved from this spot. All the traveling that I've done on that road, those oils were on the floor. So now this, this little basket has been alien taped. It's going nowhere. It's been that alien tape. Let me just tell you the stuff right here. Alien tape. Best stuff. This stuff will hold anything. It's all, it's held anything that I've needed it to hold. I haven't tried like hanging, you know, a ten pound brick from a wall. I mean, maybe on the ads it's, it shows it shows them doing that, and then maybe that works, or maybe it doesn't. But these things right here are alien taped down. See, they won't move. This don't move. It's just alien taped down. This is alien taped up. My clock, my monoxide detector, it's all alien taped. So anyway, that's it. It's a lot of things, but it's a lot of little things. It's very doable. I need some advice on some things. And um, I always love projects. The only thing I don't love is doing these projects in the cold. But I have that little space heater. As long as I can't heat my whole garage with it. Um, I even have a bigger heater. But even that, it's a two-car garage. It's a huge, huge garage. And I, I can't heat the garage. <laughs> so I'm going to heat this little space. And I'll just run in and do my little projects in here um, and keep warm. But, um, yeah, I'm just really, really, really not enjoying the cold. I look forward to hitting the road, getting myself down to Florida, being on those sandy beaches, those beautiful sunsets and all the wonderful people that I'll meet along the way. I just know it because I always do. Bye for now.